I'm A.J. Sestanino, the president and CEO of Wingman Industries, and we're here to present the products and the advancements that we made in carbon fiber and how we can take the strength of carbon fiber and capture, and capture it in encapsulation of any industrial product and make it applicable for a user. And I'd like to start at this end over here and give you a, a a quick idea of what carbon fiber is for those that don't know what carbon fiber is. Carbon fiber, it's a man-made product. It's the strongest product made from, to man. Uh, it's a fiber, it's like yarn, all right? If you were to take a piece of yarn and stretch it and wrap it around your hands, the tighter you pull, the stronger it gets. Okay, uh, but you can cut it so it's got little shear value. But as far as tensile strength, it's five times stronger than the tensile strength of steel. All right. Carbon fiber is rated in three different strengths. You have medium, you have uh, a low grade, a medium grade and an aero grade. And how do they do that with carbon fiber? It's just like if you were to take a piece of timber and it's got a certain amount of strength to it, that piece of timber. If it's got bark on it and you refine it and you keep stripping the timber, the bark off of it, that piece gets smaller and smaller, but it doesn't diminish the strength. So here's how they rate their carbon fiber. If you had carbon fiber strands that haven't been refined to make it thinner, you can only get so many in a square inch area. If it's refined and it comes down to a hundred times smaller than a human hair, you can get millions in the same area. That's how they make that product stronger. All right, in a compression beam, Let's say this is a beam like this beam that we have over here or that wood beam. If you push down on this, that fibers that are in the bottom piece of this, they can't stretch. And the more fibers you put in there, the stronger that becomes. Okay, so that's, that's for that one. Let's get back over to carbon fiber. Now the industry knows that carbon fiber being strands is wrapped in plastic. Let's, let's call it plastic, it's a resin, and they make different resins with different strengths to do different things. So if you encapsulate all of these millions of fibers in a resin that captures the fiber and you can make a shape, turn it into a shape. And the industry knows that. Unfortunately, there's two things that you can't do with a carbon fiber beam like this. You can't drill a hole in it and you can't rub on it. Those are the two things that the industry knows beyond the shadow of a doubt that that's the downfalls on a piece of carbon fiber. And here we have Boeing. Boeing just flew a hundred something planes in from Japan. And when they landed on the ground, they were very lucky that they all landed. When they inspected the wing spars because they drilled holes through the carbon fiber that they made the wing spars at. And what that does is imagine a windshield on your car. You get a rock that hits that windshield and it splinters. And you can watch those cracks grow as the vibration or, you know. So even though they were micro cracks, they still grow and that's a weak spot. And if you were to take a ceramic cup, a drinking cup, and had fibers in the structure of the drinking cup in, in the clay, if you were to take a file and rub on that, eventually you would hit the, the millions of fibers. And like I said, you can take a fiber and it's got no shear value, you can cut it. So what that rasp does or whatever is rubbing on it breaks the fiber. 
Now you can't pull the fiber, remember that, but you can cut it. Think of a, a ponytail on a girl's head, right? You pull it and she's gonna follow you, right? But you can cut it and you can cut that whole piece off. So what we did is knowing that the industry has a problem, right? We tried to find a way, uh, let, let me just re turn around and this is one of Boeing's patents. And this kind of gives us validity of what we're doing. Boeing took an I-beam like that and they milled out the top and they took a carbon fiber plate that's in here and they glued it in there, trying to give them more strength on the bottom and their top flanges. But that is only as strong as the glue that they used to put it in there. So that didn't work for them. And we disputed that and I don't believe they ever got that patent. The second thing the industry is trying to do, and this is all the universities in the world, and this is top industries, is they've come up with an idea to try to glue it. So just like they glued it in here, they're trying to put glue plates. This happens to be another Boeing patent. This is the seats on a, on a plane. Evidently, they have a lot of trouble with the aluminum that they put on the floor if there's a, a plane wreck the aluminum seat bracket just comes loose from the floor. So they're trying to reinforce it with a thin piece of carbon fiber so it doesn't stretch or pull. That didn't work for them either. So knowing that the industry has this major problem, what we did is under this patent is we took carbon fiber and we encapsulated it in a steel beam just like this and this picture over here. What that does is that allows us to protect the carbon fiber. And it gives us a means by which we can attach that to different things now. Take a bridge abutment, right? Now we have steel, just like conventional steel beams that hold bridges up. Wherever the attachment is, they don't want that to move or vibrate, right? In the old system, and there's a company, I won't mention their name, that is building 36 inch uh, double web beams and they started this project 10 or 15 years ago, and it, it was great. That beam for their strength is known all over the world. But the problem is the industry does not want them to use it because there's movement and they have to drill a hundred holes in this beam. And every time you, build, you drill a hole in it, you have those micro cracks that in time, that bridge is gonna fail. All right, so this is what we did. This is part of the patent. We encapsulated it. Um, this is a picture of the carbon fiber beam that's over there. This is a picture of that steel beam that's on there, on the table. And this is the little piece of carbon fiber that's in it. And what that did to that beam is it made the beam almost five or six times stronger than the steel itself. And that's what we were trying to do, capture the strength. What that allows us to do now is make a smaller beam, a lower profile beam, and give them the same amount of strength and at the same time make it applicable where they can weld this to other pieces of steel or bridge abutments or anything else, no holes. So we had all of this tested. We had came up with an idea. Uh, we had it tested at Washington State University and then we run an independent test lab at Applied Technical Services and we got all the data on that. So knowing that the concept worked and the idea worked, we turned around and said, okay, that's a great idea and a lot of people like it and we think that, you know, this, this could work. So what we did is we took it to uh, an IMPEX convention, which happens to be an inventors convention, convention. And lo and behold, we were inundated by um, architects and engineers that, I mean, their main question was how fast can we get it? Uh, you know, how strong can it be? And there was a million questions. And uh, it was, I mean, we were, we were running at the convention three and four engineers and architects deep among a lot of other people. We, we took their awards for engineering, special technology and construction with this idea. Let me also say that at the convention, all right, let me say one more thing about the carbon fiber. This beam that we have over here is just a four inch beam. It's just a test prototype beam. It's got the minimum amount of carbon fiber in it. 
We just wanted to use that to find out. And the engineers know that the more carbon fiber you put it in, and the key to it is that if this is a four inch beam made out of carbon fiber with a certain amount of carbon fiber in it, they can calculate what a beam four times that size would be and how much carbon fiber goes in it. And to my surprise, not being an engineer, as I found out that the strength, when it's four times higher, like it goes off the chart. I mean, it quadruples in strength. So if you got 6,000 pounds here, you got 24,000 pounds there. And if you were to do that like they did in here and put it under a point, three point test machine where they put 6,000 pounds on here, that, that beam is actually can handle uh, approximately 15 tons of 30,000 pounds. And we, it even surprised us. So after the Impex convention, we found out that there is a need for it. We put some paperwork together. I got in touch with uh, people up there in the tank core up in uh, Warren, Michigan, and they were interested. And they turned around and said, OK, send us a prototype. <laughs> So I didn't have the money to build a prototype, and that's what this is all about. Uh, at the Impex convention, we not only ran into uh, a group of fellas from Canada, uh, Ron Summers, and uh, another group from the UAE that was interested in a trailer that they invested in so we could design a trailer, and that happens to be this trailer. Nobody's ever seen a trailer like this. It splits in two spots. And these boys up there in Saudi Arabia were making 80 foot sticks, two 40 foot sticks, 36 inches in diameter and sticking four inches of concrete on it. And when they put it on a conventional trailer and spread it open and went down the road, the middle piece broke the wells. And these were made for underwater pipes for one of the countries in Saudi Arabia. So what I did is I designed a trailer to where we can buckle it down in the front, in the back, in the middle, and that stabilizes the well. And that was their investment. Not only those two that we met at the Impex convention, we opened the door to, I was, I was inundated with emails from, global emails, all right, from 50, 100 different companies the, like the third or fourth week after the convention. And these are the ideas that they had. Can you make mining beams stronger? Yes, we can. We know that we can make stronger trailers. I mean, that opens the door to the tank trailers and the military and there's five other designs specifically targeted for the truck trailer market. Any kind of overhead cranes or any cranes, all of the structures that are in here, we can make it so much stronger by using this technology, all right? Uh, bridges, railroad ties. The bottom stringer on a truss here, if that's reinforced, that'll make that truss 10 times stronger than what they're making now out of conventional metals. Uh, my idea, I flew into a couple of airports and I had to bite my bottom lip because there was snow on the ground and we didn't know if we were gonna make some of them. So I, I made a tunnel with carbon fiber bridge beams on here that could support suppression systems and lights and heat systems. And there'll be no such thing as an airport that a plane couldn't land at. To me, that was a biggie. Uh, this beam being a third lighter than steel or e even lighter than that, if they would incorporate it in, let's say, a simple aircraft carrier, for the military, and I spoke to a couple people in the, at on the not on the SecNav level, but in the, that were Navy boys. And if we can make this ship a third lighter, the military is interested in that because they can cut it through the water a whole lot faster. This is pretty self-explanatory. Uh, I don't know how many people have had friends and relatives in a car accident, but we put a thin strip in that guardrail. This will never happen. Uh, I have friends at the uh, fire department up in New York that were interested in this and they've kind of sent us a couple of dollars to help promote this. And this is a fire engine truck ladder, all right, that they stand it makes uh, maybe 150 feet with that carbon fiber in 
the superstructure, we can double that. All right? I mean, look at the reach, look at the potential on that. So knowing that we have the strength, we've cured an industrial problem by encapsulating it, all right? I've been in the trucking business, I've been in the construction business, I got a pretty good, fair idea of what could be made better, all right? So this, when we honed in on this steel beam here, oh, by the way, this only weighs about, uh, if this was a steel beam with the strength that it gave that, we're talking about one-tenth of the weight. This thing weighs probably 11 pounds, and this weighs 100 pounds. So <laughs> we made it a lot lighter. Uh, we honed in on three products over here. Let's say we took this steel beam, all right, the same identical carbon fiber in here to give this strength that an engineer needs for a bridge beam or a one of the rollers on a on a overhead crane or a lifting beam a commercial lifting beam right the technology is all the same so the material and and uh, the mechanics of it is all the same so uh, we can we can make these products uh, the last board over here deals with uh, I'm no financial engineer or anything like that, but I do know what it costs to run machinery. We've investigated the cost of uh, protrusion machines and um, mold injection machines and all the tools that we need. And like I said, being in the trucking industry and being in the excavation business, I learned one thing, okay, is, is the best way you can set up your shop and your plant to be self-sufficient, you have a lot of machinery running this, right? And you don't want to outsource anything. You don't want to outsource this.